See this dog? It's fake. This cheetah? An optical illusion. But this snake? This is a real two-headed snake. It's easy to forget that multi-headed snakes aren't only found in mythical legends or in Photoshop pictures that make for great clickbait YouTube videos. But they could also be dragged across your living room floor by your cat. Like what happened to this little guy named Dose? Found in, you guessed it, Florida. Dose was found back in 2020, and I had come across an article about him earlier this year. I had completely forgotten that two-headed snakes happen sometimes and thought this would be the perfect topic to do my first YouTube video on and proceeded to make the most boring video I could have possibly possibly come up with. So I scrapped it, reworked it, and now with the help of my editor, Gian, we are trying again. So welcome to another episode of Real Cryptids, Two-Headed Snake Edition, plus a brief handful of other two-headed animals. Okay, so what is this? What's the scientific term? Well, there's a few but the one I'll be using most is polycephaly, which is simply the condition of having multiple heads. Poly, multiple, like polygamy, but instead of multiple partners, you have multiple heads. There's also bicephaly, which applies here, which you could probably guess means two heads. If you're familiar with this phenomenon, you probably know that polycephaly has occurred in lots of different animals, including humans. But it seems like this happens the most in turtles and snakes, and has been studied the most in snakes. Actually, arguably, it's been studied the most in humans, but I'm not gonna talk about human occurrences. There's a lot of topics that are necessary to add to that conversation that I don't have the tools or the background to address properly, so I'm just gonna leave it there. Okay, so like I said, it's occurred in lots of different animals, like cats, cows, sheep, sharks, snakes, turtles, pigs, mice, birds, dolphins. Actually, why don't I just show you some examples, like this two-headed porpoise that was pulled up by a fishing boat, already dead, near the Netherlands back in 2017. The fishermen took the picture and then tossed it back into the ocean because they were worried they would get in trouble, which, fair. There was also a two-headed bottlenose dolphin that washed up in the Netherlands in 1917. There's a picture of it, but I'm gonna be honest, it's horrible to look at. I'm gonna show you, but I'm just warning you. I don't know, it's just not good. And the fact that it's in black and white makes me feel like I'm looking at a crime. Moving on, there's also two-faced cats called Janus cats, named after the Roman god Janus, who had one face looking into the past and the other into the future. Arguably the most famous Janus cat was named Frank and Louis, or Frank and Louis, who holds the record for the longest lived Janus cat. 15 years. Two-faced animals, of course, come with a variety of health problems. So this was really surprising. He or they, referring to a two-faced animal is a little bit confusing, had three eyes, the middle one not functioning, two working noses, and two mouths, only one that functioned. He did only have one brain, so I guess you would say that he is a single entity. But that gets complicated when you have a two-headed animal with two separate brains. Like this two-headed fruit bat that was found under the canopy of a mango tree back in 2016 in Brazil. They had two heads, faces, necks, a single expanded torso, and the rest of a single body. It, they, were found dead, and most likely didn't survive long after birth, if at all. So whether or not both of the brains would have worked is unclear, but as you'll come to find out very soon, there are plenty of examples where they are clearly using two brains to try and move one body. Also, here's a quick example of a two-headed bull shark found in Florida in 2011, and a two-headed blue shark found in Australia in 2008, the two most unhinged places on the planet. So far, I have only shown you vertebrates. I have an invertebrate case to share with you, a heinous case of two-headed spiders of the species to generica atrica, the giant house spider. These were produced in a lab. Why? I don't know. They took embryos, exposed them to different temperature conditions, and then studied the ones that developed two heads or had some formation towards the second head. And they were fucked up. Some didn't want to move, some were trembling, and they just had no coordination whatsoever. Some of them even tore off their appendages and their webs were fucked up. I'm not one to rate science on a 10 point scale, but zero out of 10, I fucking hate this. If anybody could direct me to the point of that paper, that would be fantastic. Okay. So how the fuck does this happen? How does an animal form two heads? Axial bifurcation, which is exactly what it sounds like. Lindsay, it doesn't sound like anything. I know, I don't know why I just said that. Axial bifurcation is defined as the incomplete splitting of an embryo. Okay, so you know identical twins, how they're made? One embryo divides to create a second identical embryo. Fraternal twins are just two embryos that have nothing to do with each other. Oh, well, they do. Like they were both fertilized separately and they're twins, so they do have something to do with each other, but okay, whatever. Axial bifurcation is when that single embryo starts to split to create the second identical embryo, but then just stops. I found a great animation. See regular split? And incomplete split. It's also possible for two well-developed embryos to fuse together instead of a half split. And two-faced animals can be a different story too, like with the excess production of specific proteins during development. In either case, it's extremely rare that this happens. And when it does, it usually ends in a miscarriage or it's born stillborn, or they only survive a few hours or days. And even if they survive that, it's pretty much impossible to live a full life as a two-headed animal in the wild. You can't get anywhere you wanna go if you wanna go that way and they wanna go that way. You're just asking to be eaten. So they really only survive in captivity. If that, because sometimes they kill each other, but 
we'll get to that. So because the odds are completely stacked against two-headed animals, on top of the fact that axial bifurcation is extremely rare, there is a lot we don't know. The direct cause of this is unknown, but scientists have identified some potential factors that when combined might play a part in this. Chemical toxins, exposure to radiation, environmental pollution, inbreeding depressions from small gene pools, a couple other ones, etc, etc. You might be thinking that those sound like human-made factors, which begs the question, are humans causing this to happen more? We can make assumptions, but we don't really know for sure because this is so rare. But we do know that this isn't new. Because in 2006, scientists found the fossil of a two-headed reptile in China. It dated to 150 million years old. It was some sort of Charistodiran reptile or Chapsosaur. There were semi-aquatic reptiles that looked something like this or this. This little fossil had two heads, two necks, and a bifurcation right at the shoulder area, meaning that's where it split. Or combined. Based on its curled up position and the fact that it was 70 millimeters long, really tiny, the scientists believed that it hadn't even made it to birth or hatched yet when it fossilized. Okay, so that means that as long as humans have been around, there's a chance that they've encountered a two-headed animal before. Which finally brings me to the point of the video, two-headed snakes. The first reliable reports are all the way back from Aristotle, 350 BC, which is pretty fucking far back. This is when I know my English class failed me because I don't know if I just pronounced that right. Is it Aristotle? Aristotle? Really, who knows? And as you probably know, multi-headed snakes or snake-like creatures come up in a ton of different ancient cultures from all over the world and have had various meanings. Life and death, transformation, good and evil, duality in general, and in real world findings have often been considered bad omens. Did all of these legends originate from real discoveries of two-headed snakes? I don't know. Probably not. But it's interesting that so many cultures have created stories about them. So as I had mentioned earlier, snakes are the most studied and well-documented types of two-headed animals. Most of the information I got from them originated from this synopsis that was made in 2007 that collected as many authentic cases as possible. I'll put it here. There's a link in the description if you want to read it. At the point the synopsis was written, the number of authentic cases of two-headed snakes was at over 700. Who knows what it's at now? Maybe a lot more, maybe not really any more at all. Well, we know of two, at least, because there was the one from 2020 and then one from 2022. This was just a couple months ago. There's a couple likely reasons why this phenomenon seems to be more prevalent in snakes. One, they produce a lot of offspring at once. Two, the developing embryos are exposed to the environment via X as compared to mammals. Both of those points apply to turtles too, which I had mentioned also seemingly have more common occurrences. Another reason in particular with snakes is the fact that they're bred constantly in captivity. So it just seems to show up more. I know there's a lot of holes in those potential reasons, but we just really don't know enough. And of course the data we have is skewed because we never get to understand how common this is in the wild. But because we've seen it plenty in captivity, we know that there are several morphologies that a two-headed snake can take. And they have big scientific names that none of us really have to know. So I drew them instead. The two most common are these two, either barely split at the head or split at the neck. These make up 93% of the cases. There's also a bit lower split, a tail split, one head and two torsos, whoa, and two heads, one torso, two tails. You can really mix and match here. Most of the time the snake will have a dominant head that controls everything. It moves, it eats, it drinks. And a lot of the times that second head is so underdeveloped or vestigial that it really is just a growth or even a parasite since it is using energy up just by existing there. That is the best case if you're a snake in a two-headed scenario. Because when you have two fully functioning brains, shit can get ugly quick. If they both eat, fighting is inevitable because they usually seem to be unaware of the fact that they are attached to the same stomach. On at least one occasion, they did have two separate stomachs, but I digress. This can lead to death by starvation if they just can't stop fighting. They also have a hard time going anywhere and their movements are typically pretty jerky. However, there has also been some evidence of feedback between the two brains. In one snake named Medusa, while head A was swallowing a mouse, head B was mimicking the motion of swallowing a mouse even though its mouth was empty. In another snake named Dudley Duplex, one head yawned and the other one yawned after. Coincidence? Probably, but it was written down. This is the perfect spot to show you my favorite picture of a two-headed snake. I need to pull it up just to look at it while I'm talking. Yeah. Oh my god. I want this hung up in my home. It was taken by a photographer named Trevor Frost who took hours to get this picture. He had to blow warm air out of his mouth towards their heads, try and trigger them to stick their tongues out. And it took a long time to get them in sync because they kept taking breaks for the snake so it wouldn't get stressed out. But dude, like this is the coolest picture I have ever seen in my entire life. I'm gonna get it tattooed on me. Actually, I'm gonna get a two-headed snake tattoo. Sorry, mom. I already have a one-headed snake. I'm gonna get a two-headed snake.
Anyway, the constant fighting of two fully functioning heads on one body has been known to get even uglier than starvation. There was a two-headed snake that used to reside at the Port Elizabeth Snake Park in South Africa in the 1930s. It was a venomous snake belonging to the genus Samophis, they didn't give a species, who was known as a case of double homicide suicide. One night, each head was given a frog to eat. A simple solution to prevent fighting, but not foolproof. In the morning, it was discovered that head A had swallowed head B down to the bifurcation of the neck, the connection point. Head B was luckily still alive and maneuvered out by a caretaker, but of course Head B held a grudge after all of this, as anyone would. Eventually, Head B envenomated Head A so thoroughly that the whole snake died. A case of double homicide suicide. There was also a case of a two-headed snake in Pennsylvania in 1910 with a similar story. One of the heads was fully functioning and the other head was vestigial. One day, the fully functioning head attacked the vestigial head and shoot itself to death. The most famous two-headed snake of all time was named We, an albino rat snake that lived at the St. Louis World Aquarium from 1999 to 2007. We was a huge attraction who even appeared on talk shows and once got kidnapped by teenagers, but they were and we was returned back to the aquarium. As you would probably guess, two-headed snakes are worth a lot of money and have been owned by some very random famous people over the years. Apparently, Thomas Edison, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and Ellen DeGeneres. And Nicolas Cage donated a two-headed snake to a zoo in 2008. And I think that's the right place to end the video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next long form video coming next week. And you can keep up with my daily short form content on TikTok and Instagram. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya! Cats, cows, sharks, sheep, shit.